Can CDs sound different? Hmm. Jerry in Brookfield, Wisconsin writes, Hey Paul, can there be any differences in the way CDs are produced or the medium that's used to produce them on? For example, Reference Recordings uses HDCD, while JVC has XRCD, and Mobile Fidelity promotes its UltraDisc Gold CDs. Since all are in the 1641 uh, format, does it really matter? Now let's see if there's more to that question or not. Okay, so first off, um, we're, we're sort of mixing things up here. XRCD is the extended, um, uh, extended resolution compact disc, and HDC, HDCD is reference recordings high definition compact disc. Now those are two very different formats, if you will, and I'll get into that in a second. And then there is the change in physical media, which we're talking about with the UltraDisc Gold CDs. So those are very different things because you can take uh, on a reference recording, let's, let's start with HDCD. HDCD is a format that uh, the guys over at Reference Recording, Keith Johnson, uh, what's it, Flash Flom or something, uh, some very brilliant guys over at, uh, I think they, uh, they work with Spectral, um, really smart guys. And they came up with a way of extending dynamic range that has nothing to do with the CD itself. In other words, HDCD is a format of the way that we put data onto, uh, the way we format data. And, and what you put it onto, the physical media, whether it's on a hard drive or whether it's on a, just a standard data disk or CD, doesn't matter, okay? So the fact that HDCD sounds differently than non-HDCD has nothing to do with the physical media. So let's, let's get that straightened out. And, and just briefly, because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, I don't even know if HDCD is still around. I think uh, my friend Robert Becker who was, and, and Dave Fletcher, who were part of that group, sold it, if I remember right, to Microsoft. Did pretty well with it. And I don't know if Microsoft ever did anything with it. But in any case, what they do is they toggle the least significant bit so that it offers an, a, a, an additional 6 dB of dynamic range, which in essence gives a CD, which normally has about 96 dB of dynamic range, something upwards of 100. So what is the least significant bit? Well, when you look at a 16-bit word, which is as he points out, 16441. Well, the 16 bits is the, the numerator that tells you how much, how high you can count, basically, and thus uh, what kind of dynamic range you can get out of it. And the least significant bit is, is the lowest level of that uh, dynamic range, where the most significant bit, the MSB, it's actually a company named after that, is you know, the, the, the top bit, the loudest bit that toggles on and off. And, and so if you, if you lose that lowest bit, the information there is usually down in the noise and not all that valuable. Most people couldn't tell the difference between a 15-bit or a 16-bit CD or recording if it, if it, uh, if it meant their life. <laughs> but that, that said, what they do is they use that bit in a, in a proprietary technology to toggle an extra six bits of dynamic range. So that's HDCD. Um, extended, the, the, the JVC, extended, um, you know, I, I have very, uh, a very small understanding of that. I know they use dither in the, in the mastering process. And dither is basically random noise that they add in to, to extend the dynamic range. And you, a mathematician could explain it far easier than I could, but it has something to do with the mastering process that JVC does that supposedly also extends dynamic range by adding jitter during the mastering 
process, something, well, as an example, when, when Bob Stather and I made the original digital lens years ago uh, in the 95, 96 year range at Genesis, that product, you had the ability to take 16-bit CDs and make them 18 bits or 20 bits. And we did that by simply adding dither to those lower bits and extending the word length. And that was at a time when there was nothing but CDs. And you could hear a difference. And most of that difference is in the way a DAC handles the different filtering options of 16, 18, 20, 24 bit changes to the bit depth. They, they can handle, uh, the filtering is a little bit different. Same thing with sample rate. Different sample rates um, enact different filters so that you can have uh, gentler filters. So I, I'm not up to speed on the XRCD, but it is, again, part of the mastering process. It can be put onto a regular CD or a data CD or a, uh, a hard drive. Now, I, I will qualify that by saying that JVC claims they do something very different in the in the glass masters by extending you know sharpening up the, the pits and the lands I'm not sure how much I buy of that but in any case they, they claim it is and then lastly the the gold CDs my friend Cookie Marenko uses gold CDs um, I and and the ultra disc those are I guess just finer made devices and all I can suggest to you is that they probably sound better only because of its potential ability to have fewer errors when the laser reads off of the CD and we know that unless you have a player or a transport like like ours that takes all the data, regardless of, of how it's gotten off, and stores it all in a very large 30-second buffer to then spit it out with a very precise low jitter clock, and, and, and thus it doesn't care how hard it is to get the data off of the disk, whether the laser is struggling or not struggling. You, you don't hear any of that, the problems that, 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 that makes, which by jittering the clock when it's working too hard, on a normal CD player, which doesn't really have that long buffer, that would be the, the, the advantage there. So a gold CD is probably not going to sound any different inside one of our players, but in most players it probably would sound better because the laser is working less hard to get the proper data off of the disc. Sorry that was a little convoluted, but hey, you know what? You got it for free. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.